Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning. I'm Deborah Needham. I'm one of the two deputy Artemis science leads along with Amanda Nam, who will be um, helping us out later today too. Um, and I'm thrilled to um, introduce our next speaker with an enthusiastic welcome from the planetary science division. Uh, Lori Glenn, please take it away. Thank you, Deborah. And just get a confirmation. Looks like everyone can hear me. My box is lighting up, so that's good. Um, so I'm just really happy to to be here to speak to the um, LSSW uh, this go round. Uh, this has been such an incredibly successful series of workshops, and uh, I just I, I'm really excited to have a chance to talk with you all today. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, I just want to say a few words, um, just that, you know, lunar science is planetary science. In fact, a lot of times when I give my talks, I say that really planetary science is its own independent discipline, separate from astrophysics and astronomy, really came to be during the Apollo era, era where we were really doing in situ uh, science uh, in our solar system. So the moon really does play a, a critical role in solar system science. Um, and you can, of course, see our new decadal survey clearly outlines that a lot of the highest priority science goals for planetary um, can be achieved at the moon. Um, I did want to make a couple of comments. Um, we have heard uh, the concerns from the lunar community through our planetary advisory committee and through the decadal um, requesting a, an integrated lunar strategy. Um, and I want to assure you all that uh, we're working closely between Planetary Science Division and with Joel Kearns and his folks in the SEO group um, to develop that strategy. Um, I certainly recognize that sometimes the relationship between PSD and SEO, as well as lunar science and CLIPS, uh, can seem somewhat confusing and, and perhaps opaque. Um, but the way I think about it is that, to me, lunar science, the science, uh, lives in the planetary science division. We set the strategies for lunar science, but we have lots of tools um, in our toolbox. Um, uh, some of those tools uh, for achieving the science include the research programs that we fund, the ash materials work, such as ANCSA, uh, that kind of work. And, and CLIPS is one of the tools in our toolbox. And as Thomas talked about, and you'll hear from Joel, CLIPS landers deliver a lot of non-lunar science payloads, but we are a major customer for lunar science. Uh, for example, delivery of Viper. Um, the decisions on what lunar science payloads are selected to fly on CLIPS are part of the lunar science strategy. Um, and this part is evolving as we hopefully see service capabilities mature, um, allowing more strategic options um, using uh, the, the CLIPS tool. Um, we also want to make sure we're working closely with human exploration side of the house to set lunar science priorities for Artemis. And of course, um, SEO works very closely uh, with the human exploration side to help make sure that, that we are represented. Again, we have several tools. We have SURVEY, the joint uh, collaborative work uh, with uh, the Institute uh, that's uh, supported by both human exploration and by science. Um, uh, we also have um, you know, planetary science and SEO working closely to provide the science support that will be needed for those Artemis missions. Um, so looking ahead, uh, we're really excited as we are in the process of digesting the recommendations from the Planetary Decadal Survey. Um, it's really important, of course, that this is the first time we've asked the National Academies to include the science enabled by human exploration. And so there's a lot of great input in there, and we're in the process of digesting that. If I could have the next slide, please. Just a quick capture of where we are in our planetary science portfolio with 38 missions either in development or in operations. And you can see um, our moon box uh, is growing and growing. Right now, it just says CLIPS times six, I think, there. Uh, but uh, you know, if we put everyone on there, it's going to start taking up our whole uh, planetary fleet there. So really proud of that um, uh, as we go forward. If I could have the next slide, please. Just real quick, um, in my final minute, a, quick, a couple of quick updates on uh, some things going on in our planetary portfolio. Um, you heard that there's a bunch of CubeSats that will be launching with uh, Artemis 1. And LunaMap is uh, a small mission that was selected through our first round of Simplex is going to be uh, launching with Artemis. It's already integrated and ready to go. The Lunar Trailblazer mission is making great progress towards their launch. Um, they're uh, progressing extremely well. Um, and then we also have eight new Viper co-investigators that have been selected. And this team is preparing for their systems integration review for the, the rover itself. So lots of great progress there. 
And with that, I think I will stop presenting. You can go to the next slide if there is one. Probably, okay, yeah. And so I'll stop there and we'll take it, take it from there, Deborah. Thank, thank you very much, Lori. Um, and I'm sure we'll have some questions for you later on in the, in the broadcast. <laughs>